Go. So you'll notice during this series, uh, my hair colour is going to change. That's because I had a bit of a mishap with the original filming and lost quite a few of the files, so I've had to redo them. See, mistakes happen to the best of us. So best foot forward, have a good time, and I hope you all enjoy. To thaw your wallaby skin from frozen, take your frozen skin, Pop it into a container of fairly hot water. Leave it for 10 to 20 minutes, sort of depending on the ambient temperature outside, how big your skin is. Come and check it every couple of minutes. See how it's going. This one's still fairly well frozen. Still fairly well in one piece. So I'll leave that to soak. Once you've finished thawing and and soaking you can use the water on your garden the plants really love it works like a liquid fertilizer so the skin has been soaking for about 20 minutes it's all softened and loosened up there are no more frozen bits so to prepare we gently squeeze out without pulling too hard any excess water and then we take it over to our cloth and spread it out to give it an inspection okay so a visual inspection of the fur side just to make sure that there are no areas where it's fly blown. This one does have a couple of little patches here and here. Fly blown is just a really nice way of saying that uh, the flies have laid eggs and because these have been frozen and then thawed these ones won't hatch into flies or into maggots but we still need to remove them. So you're just going to take your brush and gently scrape them out. This might take a little while and you'll get some build up. So when you get that build up, just clean it off with a tissue or some paper and go back at it again. Ideally, you want to remove all of those little eggs but sometimes you'll have one or two that escape and you just can't get them. And that's okay. They're not, they're not going to hatch. They're not going to affect the quality of your skin. But you want to get any big clumps out before we tan. That's really important. Go. Okay. So now that... I'll focus over here. Now that all of those fly eggs, all that fly blown is gone and brushed out, we can focus on the rough edges. So this particular skin has quite a few rough edges that I'll need to trim. On this side here, this piece opens up into what would have I believe what would have been a pouch so it's a female skin and we're just going to trim those off with a pair of scissors to make it easier to deal with when we're stretching. If you choose to leave these pieces on just understand that you will need to stretch them out quite well and they will take extra time To dry because they are so thick. Any small thin tag pieces can come off. This is a back leg. This is back leg. This piece has been cut and damaged so we'll remove that. coming around again to that 
centerpiece where the pouch opening is and we'll just trim that it's got quite a thick layer of fat to it so it doesn't trim quite as neatly as some that doesn't have as much fat on it so that's quite fatty there please remember these off cups are not suitable for animal or human consumption none of the off cuts none of the scrapings off of any of these are suitable for consumption dispose of them properly in the rubbish now that the edges are trimmed up we need to pat down to dry just take as much of the moisture out of the fur as you can because you don't want a wet fur going onto your stretching board make sure you use old cloths or old rags to do this because you really don't want to ruin any that you're going to use again I keep a selection of towels specifically for this purpose once the moisture has come away from the fur we bring it over to the stretching board and lay it down skin side up so this is our skin side this is our fur side so we want to go skin side up over on the stretching board okay so what I'm doing here is I'm starting to scrape one of the legs so you're going to take the skin you're going to pull it out as tight as you can and you're going to take whatever you're using as your scraper and you're going to start very very gently but firmly scraping towards your body now when you're holding a flat rock you're going to want one edge against your skin and you're going to want to drag towards you be careful not to apply too much pressure or you run the risk of putting a hole through your skin and you really don't want that you just want to take up that layer of membrane and sinew and fat we've got a couple of other types of scrapers we've got a plastic paint scraper i've never actually used one of these on a project but it has a flat edge just be careful of your corners and again you're just going to hold it and scrape towards you it's easier to scrape towards you than away and you get better result that one's yeah, that's not too bad metal paint scrapers again be very careful of these corners these corners can and will cut the skin so again holding it nice and tight bringing it in and just scraping the wider your scraping blade the more even a pressure you can get and the better the end result will be now i've also got a couple of knives i prefer to use a knife to do my scraping although for a long time i have used rock meat cleaver with a slightly rounded edge really really good for when you're on this big inside piece smaller non serrated knife always has to be non serrated again being careful of any points or tips always making sure to look after yourself first pull it out and just scrape okay so we're going to open up the tail open it up so that there are no creases no folds you're going to want to go all the way down to the very tip hold it open with one hand and in this case you want to scrape away from yourself the tail is very thick it has a lot more fatty tissues and a lot more of 
the, the thicker skin so you can be a little less gentle. Make sure you get all the way out to the edges and all the way down to the tip. This one's fairly clean already, so it's only going to take a little while to scrape it down. If it starts to get really wet, like you can see the, the liquid pooling up on the blade, grab a little bit more of your bicarb and just gently sprinkle that on and rub it in. Helps to keep it all clean. And then once you've scraped all the way to the tip, you're going to want to start at the top and scrape towards yourself a few times just to make sure that you're getting any of that leftover residual moisture out. And stop. In preparation to stretch, we're going to follow these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the main points to stretch the skin out and then we'll tack in between to continue the stretch. So you start at the top. Make sure that you angle your nails away. And don't nail all the way in. We want to leave a fair amount of that nail exposed. We're then going to take the other end of the top and pull that towards where we had the number two. Grab your next nail. Whoop. That's all right. Doesn't matter if you bend them over a little bit. It just means that they'll hold a bit better. Come down to the tip of the tail and we're going to pull. You're going to go through the center of the tip of the tail. Again, making sure to angle that nail away from the main body. So, top side, top corner. If you have four legs still on your skin, that's where the foreleg would be. So we're pulling that out nice and tight, keeping it angled away from the center. Number five, again, where that foreleg would be, pulling it out nice and tight. nailing it in. Doing it in this pattern ensures an even all over stretch. Number six would be where the hind and seven are where the hind legs would be. So we'll pull out number six, pull that down nice and firm. And then sit. We're now going to put, for this particular size of skin, two additional nails at the top. One between one and four, and one between one and five, and possibly three to four on each side between four and six, and possibly two between six and the base of the tail. Our tail we need to spread out starting down towards the tip. This section will actually take the most nails of the whole project. You want to go about an inch and a half to two inches between each nail to keep it down flat to the board. The number of nails that you use 
will depend entirely on the size of your skin. So, alright, so we're loosening up some of the membrane now. The bicarb dries it out quite a bit, so it makes it easier to just grab and pull. And you just want to start pulling all of that loose sinew off, all that loose membrane. Now, you can come right down close here. You can see this dark red spot here. That's actually a bruise. You'll never get rid of those colour patches, so don't worry too much about those. What you need to worry about is getting all this loose, basically white membrane off and any of the yellow fat that's left and any of the muscle that's left. Now that it's all stretched out, it will be easier to remove the tight bound muscles. So that's anything that's sort of that pale pink color. And that sort of looks like when you pull it off. fine muscle and it just peels off and that's what we're looking for a beautiful smooth underlayer yeah the kids found this bit to be a bit gross okay so as you can see we're all nicely stretched out we've taken as much of the fat and sinew and membrane off as we possibly can. There are still a couple of little, what I call problem areas. These, you're just gonna have to keep an eye on them. If you have any areas that are still slightly yellow or slightly darker pink, you'll just need to take an eye, keep an eye on those throughout the tanning process. So we're about to go over and we're going to mix up our tanning mix. Mix is bicarb soda and fire ash and kerosene. Please remember to do this in a really well ventilated area. We don't want you passing out from the fumes. So mix your bicarb and your ash together. There should be, there should be approximately a half a cup of ash for every 500 grams of bicarb soda that you use. Now, when we're adding our kerosene, you need to take this fairly slowly because you're looking for a consistency, not an amount. So the consistency that you're looking for is about the consistency of toothpaste. So you pour a little bit of kerosene into your mix and you start to give it a mix. Now I'm actually being really naughty here at the moment. I don't have any of my PPE on. So I should probably stop and do that, hey? That's better. Um, the mask, you really should be using a particulate mask, not one of these cloth ones, but this will prevent anything from going in your mouth. You'll also need a pair of gloves just to prevent any chemical burns to your hands. Also makes cleaning up a hell of a lot easier. So, Slowly add a little bit of kerosene at a time. Mix in really, really thoroughly. You don't want it to be too wet. You also don't want it to be too dry. The kerosene will give the bicarb a little bit of a blue color, which should be leavened out by the ash. The ash should turn it a, a light grayish color. If you've got too much charcoal in your ash, it will go a darker grey and this will affect the overall colour of your skin once it's finished. Now, this is still a little too dry. You can see how it's really quite clumpy and lumpy. So we'll pour a tiny little bit more kerosene in. 
it's at this point that it, it really does come down to just you know you add a tiny little bit of it at a time until you get the kind of consistency that we're looking for this is still a little dry but it's getting closer as I said before we're looking for a toothpaste consistency so nothing too wet nothing too dry but holding together really well that should in theory be about enough yeah that's looking good now once you've mixed this it does need to be either used straight away which is the preference so mix it up a small batch at a time the other option is to put it into a watertight airtight container label it clearly and that way if you need to use a little bit later for a second tan or for a second stage of the tan you've got some already mixed the preference though is to mix it up fresh each time because it just works better this is the kind of consistency we're looking for not too wet not too dry holds together quite nicely And that's our tan solution ready. At the moment it's fairly overcast outside. So depending on how the weather sits for the next few days will depend on whether I need to come out in 24 hours or if I need to come out in 12. We've had about a week of curing. We need to check to make sure that it's cured nicely. If you come across patches like this, where the cure has lifted and come away, don't worry, it's kind of what you're aiming for. Take your scrubbing brush and start brushing all of that smelly cure away. Now at this point, you want to clean off as much as you possibly can before removing any of your nails. If the nails come loose, that's fine, but we just want to get rid of as much of the cure as we possibly can before we start undoing it. And stop. And where my hands are at the moment. Okay. So we've taken off as much of the cure as we possibly can and we've got a few different shades of white and yellow here to look at. We've got some loose membrane that's coming up so we're just going to gently pull that away, take that off. Now this skin is definitely going to need a second cure and you can tell that mostly because of these patches here around the hindquarters the tail and a few patches up around the sides they're still a little bit moist to the touch and that's what we want to avoid we don't want that moisture in the touch we also want it to go a nice white color not this sort of darker darker color so the aim is to get it looking nice and white or as pale as we can all over. So for a second cure, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mix up our bicarb caro ash mix again, reapply, leave it for another week. So making sure we get all of those edges covered. Now you might have noticed that this second set of cure is a little bit different in color to the first one we did. That's because the ash that was put into this one has a higher charcoal content, so you can see all the little black specks. Normally I would try to avoid that, but unfortunately at this point that's all I had to work with. Now I did make this cure a tiny touch too dry, so I'm just wetting my gloves with kerosene and then patting it down. This will impart just enough moisture to make everything nice and pliable and get it to spread nicely. Sorry. Go. 
Okay, so this is the skin that we gave the second curing to. It's got a few areas that look like they might need a little bit of extra work. So what we're going to do, now that we've stripped all of that tanning crust off, we're taking out all of the nails. So keep your nails flat, you might be able to use them again. So we're just going to remove all the nails from all the way around so that our skin comes up. Okay, Go. so now that we've loosened it all off and it's you're able to flip it over to take a look, a lot of the fur will be laying down really, really flat because it's been attached to that board. We'll go through and we'll fluff that up later. At this point, you're going to have to decide what you want to use your skin for. If you want to use it for clothing, it's going to take you a lot longer to soften and rub the skin down. However, if you want it for a wall hanging or as a mat, it won't require quite as much time. We're going to take our handy dandy rock and we're going to start with circular motions, sanding all that soft fluffy stuff off. So this particular part will take you quite some time for, for a fur of this size, for a wall hanging, I'd be looking at an hour and a half to two hours worth of rock work. Doing that at a fairly solid pace for the whole time without a break. So while you're scraping, you may need to scrape in nice even strokes like you did before. And then you'll have pieces come up that are like this that you can just pull off with your fingers. They'll come off in fairly long strips and the longer the strip, the cleaner the pull. So just keep rubbing that rock, circular motions, straight up and down along that grain. The straight up and down will make it nice and soft and start to actually soften up that skin underneath. Try not to go too deep because you don't want to go right through the skin. Go. When it comes to the tail, instead of doing those circular motions, because it's so narrow, you're just going to do straight strokes away from the body, gently down the length of the tail. This will clean everything up nicely and soften it as you're going. If you come to any curled edges, hold up nice and close, put your rock on a 45 degree angle and just very, very gently using short strokes, rub that down. It'll take you a little bit of time to do that. You might need to do it three or four times, but eventually it will unfold and sit down nice and flush. those areas that we thought were going to be problematic and what we gave a second tan to these are coming up really really quite clean quite easily which is a very good sign we're just taking that rock and rubbing right out to the corners and as you can see the skin itself is coming up really really clear underneath you want to try and get as much of this white stuff off as possible that's the remains of the sinew and it's white because the, the bicarb has bleached the colour out from it. If you come across parts that you're a bit worried about, you can just pick them with your finger. Use, like I don't even really have fingernails, but I just use a nail 
to gently rub around those corners and it comes up quite easily.